Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop. I am just back from PAX Unlimited. Uh, Peter and I were there for the entire weekend along with Jason. And we also got to hang out with a ton of amazing people, see some great industry contacts and designers and publishers. And I wanted to tell you about the top 10 solo and cooperative games that I saw there. All but one of these are games that are coming up either soon or in the far future. Uh, one of them is a game that's actually out now, but I just adored, <laughs> so I had to mention it. But uh, yeah, let's get into it and hear about some of these awesome games coming up. All right, first at number 10, we have Retrograde from Resonim Games. This is a competitive real-time roll and write with sort of a like Galaga or Space Invaders theme. But it also has a solo mode where you use a phone or a timer to basically play in like little 25 second increments. And in that time, you try to roll the dice and then you select a card that will let some of your dice be used to shoot at the enemies. You can get a wide variety of power ups that will let you get to more dice. And I don't often love roll and writes, but this one was quick and frenetic and fun. Uh, will it stand up to tons and tons of plays? for the solo mode. I don't know yet, but I really enjoyed my first play. I think it's coming to Kickstarter in maybe February. Uh, I might uh, try to do a preview of just the solo mode to show it off. But yeah, it's uh, definitely a fun one. Retrograde from Resonim uh, coming in 2022. And next with a 1-2 real-time punch, also coming in 2022, I think straight to retail, is Kites from Floodgate Games. And this one is one that I had not heard of at all, and it's such a simple idea, but man, is it fun. You've got uh, six sand timers that are all different colors, and you have uh, players with hand of cards and a deck of cards and on your turn you can play a single card and it'll show one or two colors and you have to flip the sand timers of those colors and then the next player gets to play their card and the idea is you're trying to get through the entire deck of cards you win by uh, emptying the entire deck in all your hands but once you start a sand timer the first time you play its color if it ever runs out of sand if any of the six ever run out of sand you immediately lose and this is kind of like a magic maze where you know you want to flip a sand timer when it's almost out so that you get yourself as much extra sand as possible. But combining that with the limited colors in your hand and the frenetic play of trying to play cards as quickly as you can and being forced to sometimes flip a timer that is totally the wrong color and will really mess you up, it was way more fun than I thought. Like Retrograde, the real-time part might get old. I'm not seeing this as a game I would play like three or four times in a row, but it uh, definitely seems right up there with like something like Five Minute Dungeon as a, a fun, frenetic, real-time experience that I think I'll really enjoy. So that's another one I'm going to try to cover. Uh, I think it was like March in retail, they might have said. So again, that was Kite from Floodgate Games. Next is one that I'm covering very, very soon. I think this is delivering to Kickstarter backers, and this is Merchants of the Dark Road. I didn't actually get to play myself, but uh, Jeremy Howard from Man vs. Meeple and I kind of tag-teamed teaching the game to a group of four. And this one is a competitive game for up to four players. It's from Elf Creek Games, and it's a kind of like competitive merchant game where you're getting items, selling them to heroes, delivering them to different towns. And it also has a solo mode, so I didn't get to play that, but I did get to lead this four player game and kind of watch how that worked. And I really like the interplay of the different actions. There's a lot going on. I feel like I might have a hard time winning and having good strategy. But if uh, the solo mode adds some cool stuff on, I think it could be great. So I'm really excited to try out Merchants of the Dark Road from Elf Creek. Uh, again, I've only seen competitive, but I should have the review and playthrough of that in about two weeks. I need time to play through it enough to really give a good opinion on the solo. So that should be coming really soon. And at number seven is Kapow, which is coming from Wise Wizards. And this is one that was originally published by another other company, but Wise Wizards is doing like a new edition of it, and it was already kickstarted. And then they added Solo into it because uh, it's a dice based fighting game where you kind of go back and forth, uh, you roll dice simultaneously and secretly assign them to different abilities, and then you'll try to block their attacks while also hitting them with yours. And each character has uh, unique special abilities, these are like superheroes basically. But yeah, I think like after the Kickstarter or during the Kickstarter, they added a solo mode, and I got to see how it works. I didn't play yet, which is maybe why this is down at number seven. I might like it a lot more because I like those kind of competitive fighting games, especially when they have good solo. But the solo looks like it works super smoothly. You just roll the dice once and you basically assign them from top to bottom for the boss's board and it'll trigger different attacks and abilities and you can see what they could do. You can see what their most common stuff is. So it should give you some nice sort of strategy in your own actions because one of the cool things is uh, your dice can be used in multiple ways. So just because you roll your dice, it doesn't mean that you only have one strategy to pursue. You can really do a lot of different actions and upgrade in a lot of ways. You're kind of putting faces into dice. 
So you have like these dice that start weak and grow stronger. It's kind of like a dice builder. So yeah, Kapow, very excited to try that. They should be sending me a prototype. So um, I should have some kind of coverage before the final game delivers. We can see how it looks. And next is a really exciting one, Astro Knights. This is coming from Indie Boards and Cards. If you haven't heard about this, I know they already did a big announcement. This is kind of like a new twist on Aeon's End. And <laughs> here's the thing, and this is why it's only number six for me. It's basically Aeon's End. Uh, they do have some things that are different, and I like them a lot. And I'm going to be doing a video for the Kickstarter, so you'll hear more about my thoughts. I'll be quick here. But it's like 90% Aeon's End or 95% Aeon's End. If you like cooperative deck building and battling against a boss and having unique heroes, all that stuff is still in here. But they change up how the market works in a way that I like. They made setup like 10 times faster, which I definitely appreciate. And it didn't feel dumbed down. It didn't feel like I was missing some major content. This one, by the way, wasn't at the uh, convention, but I just gotten my prototype and I brought it and Jeremy Howard from Members of Meeple brought his too. And yeah, I got to play it a few times, uh, solo and co-op. And so far, it's great. I mean, it's Aeon's End, <laughs> but again, it's like a faster, smoother Aeon's End. So, you know, will it replace Aeon's End or just be like a new flavor for people to try out? Uh, will people like the sci-fi theme better than the like magical, mystical fantasy theme? I don't know. But Astronauts, Indie Board and Cards, one I'm very excited to play more and already really enjoying the plays I've gotten so far. All right, and number five is the only game that is like available right now. Just go buy it, go buy it, because <laughs> it is so much fun. Letter Jam. Uh, this is a Czech Games Edition, uh, one of my favorite companies, Czech Games Edition. This is a deductive cooperative word game. And how it works is each player has letters in front of them and it's sort of a Hanabi style. You can't see your own letter, but you can see everybody else's letters. And the players uh, take turns or just kind of jump in whenever they have a clue that uses a bunch of the letters to make a word. And your letter will get used, but you won't know what the letter is. So it'll be like, uh, <laughs> it'll be like C-H-A-I. I question mark. And then you're like, okay, so the question mark is me because I didn't see what my letter was. So C-H-A-I, it could be R for chair, it could be N for chain, and you'll kind of like slowly deduce what it could be. But then you also see when other players say that they've solved their letter and they move on to another letter. And sometimes that'll give you hints like, oh man, if it was chair, they wouldn't have known their letter. But if it was chain, they would have. So uh, it's a really cool one. And my favorite part, I'll talk about this in the review because I'm definitely going to do a review of this one, uh, is <laughs> uh, at the end, you like flip up your letters and you get to see what word you think you had because you like get to move around your letters and it, oh my gosh hilarity ensues it, it was the best thing <laughs> and uh, we were playing this uh, several times last night uh, before uh, the convention kind of ended and yeah tons of fun letter jam from check games edition again i'm going to be doing a video on this one as soon as i can uh, i have a few things to go through first but i'll hit this uh, up very soon because i've got a copy and it's in retail right now i'll check it out all right and at number four ascension tactics from stone blade and ultra pro and I'm surprised about this at number four because I didn't get to play this one, but it looks really awesome. So this is uh, delivering to Kickstarter backers now. So we're hoping we get a review copy. We'll see what happens. If not, let's go and buy one because I'm really excited to play this. But uh, if you played Ascension or any of the other competitive deck builders, uh, it has the same basic idea. You've got cards that give you money to buy more cards for your deck, and you've got cards that give you attack. Now in Ascension, a lot of these kind of attacking deck builders, that attack lets you hit something. But Ascension Tactics changes it up where the attack activates your existing units so you can move them around it's a lot based on objective control so it's not just bam 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 hit each other and uh, again we got to see what the solo and co-op looks like because it's got two player co-op and it's got solo and it's got a campaign you can go through and it's got one-off options and I like tactical games and there aren't that many of them that have uh, you know solo and co-op mode and there aren't that many of them I mean any of them that have deck building so it looks really really cool uh, hoping to play this one as soon as I can so uh, you know the number four again is based of my excitement because I already like Ascension as a deck builder and this looks like an awesome twist on that gameplay uh, but I haven't actually played it yet I just got to see it and talk to the designer so uh, number four Ascension Tactics Stone Blade and Ultra Pro uh, hopefully we'll have something for you on that one soon all right next to number three these last three are heavy hitters everybody <laughs> heavy heavy hitters get hyped about all of these uh, number three fully cooperative Jurassic World The Legacy of Isla Nublar this just got announced recently it's coming from Funko and Prospero Hall we got to uh, talk to I think three of the Prospero Hall designers and they showed us some of the game. And so there's another one I didn't get to play, but I'm just so excited about it. It goes from like sort of a prequel to the first Jurassic Park and like has all the characters you know. You know, it's got John Hammond. It's got uh, Muldoon, the hunter. It's got Dr. Henry Wu. And it's got some new characters to add some more diversity to the cast. And uh, it just looks awesome because um, you're going to be like building the park yourself. And then uh, the dinosaurs will be moving around. They'll be like, and you can go into buildings and like try to hide from them. And it's all objective based, but you fail forward. And uh, even when you finish the entire 
Empire Legacy, you have a game that you can play. So it's kind of more like uh, Legacy Risk, for example. And yeah, the components look great. It looks like there's tons to unlock. My kids just watched Jurassic Park for the first time recently, and they are all in the dinosaurs right now. So this one looks amazing. And it's coming on uh, 2022. And I think we'll be getting to do at least like some sort of content coverage on it. I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't think they said that there'd be any like pre-coverage, but they said they could get review copies for people. So we might not cover it until it's coming out. But either way, uh, I'm extremely excited about this one. It looks like the stuff they're doing with Legacy is fun. Uh, in Prospero Hall fashion, everything is very like user friendly and it's a fairly basic engine. You've got a few actions divided between the players and you get to do different things like moving around and moving dinosaurs and stuff. But uh, the simplicity looks like it'll allow the Legacy aspect and the campaign and the story to really shine through. So I uh, yeah, very excited about this one. Again, Funko, Prospero Hall, uh, Jurassic World, The Legacy of Isla Nublar. And last two, this was so tough. This was so tough, people. We played both these games and they were unbelievable. Uh, and I was really going back and forth. But number two is Tidal Blades 2. So I never played the original Tidal Blades. It's from Skybound Games. I think it was like a competitive worker placement game with Solo. I've heard really good things. But this one is a cooperative dungeon crawler. And it's awesome. Uh, the story is great. It's got the storybook thing, which is my favorite. And both of the games I'm going to talk about have that. <laughs> and I love it. But this one actually can put two or three storybooks together at a time. So you get like these really epic maps and you have like buildings opening up and you discover stuff as you move around. Uh, the story seems really cool. The components are beautiful. The miniatures are great. But the best thing about it, best thing about it by far. I like the player turn to be interesting in a dungeon crawler. That's why I like things like Gloomhaven. And this one has a three by three grid. And each turn you play a card. It's going to change your initiative. So if you play the strongest cards, you'll probably go back in initiative. The monsters might attack before you. But then once you play the card on this three by three grid, you pick a row or a column with that card in it and you activate every card in that row or column. And you can chain together these amazing abilities, these amazing combos. And you're trying to like fill up your columns and rows in different ways. You get like the best bang for your buck out of the cards. Because if you fully fill a row or column, then it goes away after you use it. So it was really exciting. Just like taking your turn was so much fun. And even the blank spaces on the board are printed with bonuses. So you always get something cool. Uh, yeah, so I was really, really excited about this one. Uh, Title Blades 2. I'm not sure what the actual subtitle is yet. I don't think it's actually called Title Blades 2. I'm sure it's something about a reef or something. <laughs> but uh, Title Blades 2 is great. Uh, my second favorite game of the con coming from Skybound. I think going to Kickstarter. Hopefully we'll get to uh, cover it. They say they might not have enough prototypes, but they're going to have, I think, the first six scenarios on TTS. And they did a great job with uh, showing off the game for Valor and Villainy, Ludwig's Labyrinth. That was one of our favorites recently. So yeah, I trust that they'll have a lot of content to show on TTS. You won't have to go into this one buying blind. It looks uh, so great. Title Blades 2 something <laughs> from Skybound. Uh, definitely check it out. All right, and last one, game of the convention for me, at least solo co-op game of the convention. You've heard about this one probably already. It's up for pre-order right now. Familiar Tales. This is the newest uh, book adventure game from Jerry Hawthorne and Plaid Hat Games. Uh, we've previously covered Mice and Mystics. We've covered Stuff Fables. We've covered uh, Aftermath. And this one is in that same vein, but it's got the uh, the website integration. Not an app, just a website you can go to, uh, but it's the same thing as they had in Forgotten Waters, where you've got this amazing fully featured narration with incredible sound design. It's like a Disney fairy tale. You are uh, four familiars of a wizard, these magical creatures, and you're trying to protect a baby. And you have to like adventure with the baby on the board, and it'll cry, and you have to change its diaper and feed it while fighting off monsters and making choices with which way you go and having different scenarios and different encounters and different objectives. And it's a deck builder. What? You, you level up as you get experience and mostly they replace cards. Your deck doesn't get like super huge, but you get these amazing cards and you play them a lot like Aftermath to do different actions. So it's not that random. You have like a little die roll modifier, but you're like attacking with your cards and moving with your cards and foraging to get items and the items go with your cards. They have these like icons on the cards and then the item will call for that icon. You get plus damage if you play the right cards. So really interesting deck building stuff there. The narrative is amazing. They said it feels like a Disney movie and it does. Like, I mean, it was just totally engrossing me immediately. The combat is fast. The AI is quick to resolve and straightforward. The characters are adorable. The miniatures look beautiful. It's another book game. I love these book games. So yeah, uh, this is one that I see myself playing with my game group. This is when I see myself playing with my family, with my kids. Uh, Familiar Tales up for pre-order right now. So I think it's probably like coming pretty soon. It looked basically done. The website was basically done. So I'm not sure how soon it's coming. I'm sure it's not until like February or March at the earliest with shipping what it is. But yeah, 
this one it blew me away. Uh, as much as I love Title Blades 2, and it was almost the top game, almost the top game, the theme of Familiar Tales sold me even more. I would say they both have amazing gameplay. I love the deck building and card play in Familiar Tales, but the grid is so great in Title Blades. So that, that I would say is a toss up. But for me, the kind of more kid friendly, although Title Blades is kid friendly too. I don't know. They're both awesome games. They can both be number one. I don't care. <laughs> but they were so great. If I could have played both of them the entire convention, <laughs> I might have done it. They were so, so good. So again, uh, my number one game of the convention or tied for number one, whatever you want to think, is Familiar Tales from Plat Hat Games up for pre-order right now. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to rest my voice and try to get some sleep and see my kids. I haven't seen them in uh, the entire weekend. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the great games coming. So excited for the state of board gaming and solo and board games that coming out soon. I want to play all these more and we'll see you at the next stop and hopefully we'll be covering a few of these soon. So uh, thanks everybody and be good. Have a great week.